now just on time. All right, welcome to the next next hour. We've been here in the meeting for half an hour and talked about some things. Um, among others, uh, we briefly had a question about, well, it looks very messy right here and maybe that's a bit more the style it's gonna be. But we had a question on uh, how you could maybe set like a, actually, let me expand this bit, like an interactive, uh, what was it, an interactive uh, user introduction in Getty, like the, the uh, consoles in Linux. We looked a bit at Getty options. Uh, we found Getty, there's extra args, uh, auto login user. Yeah, we didn't actually find too much there. Um, oh, by the way, uh, you can still join the meeting and ask questions, uh, probably better in chat since I'm gonna ramble a bit. Um, we also had, oh yeah, this, uh, let's take a closer look at this. So I wanted to run, um, uh, what was that? Let me go back in the shell history here. Um, oh yeah, I want, I tried to build a VM and then it didn't work. So we were in the next hour directory. We have a, right, we have a result, a build VM. So we just had a standard configuration.nix. Uh, I think this is not even needed right now. Um, it doesn't really contain anything. So probably the VM wouldn't work anyways, but we built it. Uh, well, we have this in our default.nix. You can see the files later. Uh, but so we built the VM, next build uh, dash a nixosystem.vm. All right, well, that should not take too long. All right, then we try to run it, but we ran into this error. And so uh, this doesn't happen too often, but occasionally the glibc version in next packages changes. And actually, I believe if we run file on this, oh, this is a, this is a symbolic link. All right, what is this? File on that, it's a bash script. Okay, well, uh, let's go into the bash script then. All right, and so actually, uh, what did it complain about here? This is the binary. So this is the binary that the bash script ran in here somewhere. Um, well, probably this one or uh, QEMO KVM, yeah. And finally, if we run file on this one, uh, yeah, see ya. So if we run file on this one, ah, okay, it's not the same link. We should really do a read link on this real path rather. Um, yes. All right, uh, finally, we have something here. And so, yeah, we can see here interpreter. So that's the elf interpreter. Elf is the uh, executable format on Linux. Not, I'm an expert. I'm not an expert, but um, that's, I think, accurate. And so we see here the interpreter is glibc3237. Uh, and I believe your system can have a separate glibc version, which is then not compatible. Um, now, I don't actually know how to find out. I mean, we have this here, glibc two, three, eight, not found. Uh, I guess let's search. Maybe environment. Environment, uh, that's, that's maybe worth a try. I'm just gonna run env rg glibc, probably, probably not now. Yeah, as long as you don't use two separate versions, it should be fine. We have a comment there. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna, to get a bit more info, I'm gonna hopefully be able to find something in the issue tracker. And so this happens like fairly regularly. And the answer here is to make sure your next packages version is up to date. In this particular case, I'm using an older version of next packages, which is uh, pinned by nev here. Nev show. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's next was unstable from some time ago and actually, uh, NIF doesn't show the timestamp, which is not great. Um, maybe let's take a look at that later. 
So issue tracker, that's the next issue tracker. I don't want the next one. Uh, by the way, that is uh, sometimes a common pitfall where uh, like all the terms next as next packages and next get kind of intermingled. Um, but anything relating to packages, I mean, it's kind of in the name, goes into the pack next packages issue tracker. Uh, the next issue tracker is really just the C++ code base. It's the, the next language, the, uh, the next CLI, uh, stuff like that. Everything that doesn't depend on packages really. Uh, but so in here, uh, well, this is not going to be very helpful. I get to trim it down a bit. Go up here, version glibc not found. It's better. So uh, do we have this version of the issue, Mesa uh, glibc version not found? Well, it's always the same one. So I wonder... Uh, we don't, uh, what if I could search for the 371? No, uh, I think oh, 27. I'm just kind of randomly searching for versions here. Uh, there isn't possibly due to glibc that's also, yeah, that's also a an issue like this. Yeah, okay, so I mean, let's try resolving it. Uh, the, I don't really, can't really get any more info right now. So uh, we have nev, uh, we have this version, I'm going to nev update. And uh, all right, let's leave that running for a second. By the way, I, I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I'll have a quick word on nev in a second. All right, nev show, I mean, we can find out the timestamp by, let me do git dash C. I'm gonna go into the next packages uh, repository, then show of, well not show, not show should be fine. So this was in April, so that's already like seven months ago. But now we update to Uh, right, I mean today uh, or two days ago. Um, and actually, we could also try. So we, what if we go to this next packages instance to this specific commit? Let me go into next packages. Git switch to this one. Yeah, detach the head, and uh, I need to get stash my current changes. Um, Right here, let's check out the glibc version. glibc. And uh, version is a good way to, well, on next build. So now the, the long, the traditional, the stable CLI gets a bit long if you just want to evaluate something, especially if I can spell. Eval, so that's 2.38, the version we saw earlier in the error. And the other one, was this one here. And actually, uh, let's do actually a bisection. It might be interesting. Uh, get bisect start. So we want to find the commit where it changed. Hopefully we can do it automatically. I'm going to do, well, you have good and bad, but it's not really good or bad, but you can use new and old as well. So starting, oh, waiting for good commit. Oh. Bad commit known. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna check out the other one. Okay, yep, I am indeed Not switch. Really uh yeah, yeah. Alright, get bisect old and now well actually that is like seven months of commits. It shouldn't be too slow, but that is one full release and next packages is at like almost 550,000 commits. Yes. Um, well, and actually that is kind of inefficient because we can also just go in here. Oh. 
and search for glibc 2.38. And that should, uh, well, lots of packages, I think. Probably lots of packages need to, need fixes, yes. Let's, I mean, let's briefly see what kind of fix this needs because I'm not sure. Fixes built for glibc. So glibc, as far as I know, is an C API to the Linux syscalls. Is that right? I'm not quite sure. Please someone correct me if I'm wrong. But the back here, ah, what, what is that? We have if dev, okay. Yes, it's some, some compilation flag change. I don't know. All right, um, that was done for zero hydro failures. That's also maybe just worth pointing out briefly. When does zero fighter failures end and the release along with that? Oh yeah, we can see it here. That's in just about two weeks. So it's nice. All right, um, so uh, bisection, I when I do git bisect run, allows you to run a command uh, in an automated fashion. When it succeeds, well, I guess if it succeeds, it needs to be good. So that's old according to git. Uh, so we want to figure out when the version is changed from, uh, changed to 2.38. I think we can do that with a bash here. It needs to be a command. Uh, so I'm gonna do probably something like nix instantiate, or let's use nix eval. Uh, nix eval of dash f the current directory and then the glibc dot version. All right, and then we want to make sure this is equal to 2.38, and the quoting is annoying here. I guess I could do this. All right, and uh, this might be the wrong way around, so if it is equal, it succeeds, and that's exactly not what we want, so I'm gonna flip this around. And hopefully that works. Uh, we maybe should quickly test this actually. Um, no such file. Oh, that kind of. Oh, oh, what is that? Let me let me do like a <laughs> clean here. Okay. Uh, and a is it hard head? Okay, uh, not sure what that was about. So maybe let's just run this. It succeeded, and the version is two point three seven. So that's what we want. That looks good. Let me run the bisection and I'm just gonna leave it running in the background. Maybe it didn't like how I canceled it. Yeah, that might have been it. All right, that should be actually fairly quick. It's beautiful how you can just watch Git do the thing here. All right, and uh, we didn't find it. Or <laughs> we might be the parent. Um, we can also, uh, there's a git bisect visualize. Is it this? Visualize. Which shows you kind of the surrounding context. It's, uh, I unfortunately can zoom in here, it looks like. Um, but we have 
with this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, this is actually kind of weird. Is this the actual commit that changes the glibc version? Or actually, we should just verify what the version is. Or maybe, I think it's actually the case that the command probably failed to evaluate it at all in like maybe the parent. Well, that still works. We should check that comment. Maybe something's wrong there. The comment? The comment that you're actually running, not mix instantiate, uh, but the... Uh, yeah. Well, now I'm already in a previous commit. Um, oh, I mean, okay, I'm in C shell here. Yeah, yeah, this is... Sure, if I'm gonna be able to do that. Yep. Well, uh, hmm, maybe we should just look at the commit here that it found for us. Something must be up here. Oh, okay, this is PR. Um, let's actually go on GitHub. It's gonna be easier to show it there. Commit. I used Nix eval. Yes. Yeah, this looks this looks very innocent. So uh, something must have gone wrong here. All right, um, let's let's try a get bisect reset visualize replay oh, replay log run oh uh, log might be useful. Um, we have, oh, these are all old. So these all succeeded. Oh, only this one. Oh, and that was the initial one. Um, get basic run. Let me check the comment on the uh, latest, the one that was marked as new. This one? Yeah. I mean, that's the one we've been looking at. I mean, check out, check it out and run the comment and check the oh. uh, result of the comment. Oh, you're running git bash dash c, it will execute the test, but it will not fail if the test fails. Oh. You should oh. add dash e c so, so that it will fail if a comment or test fails. Oh, that's, uh, that's some lovely... You should probably reset to the bi bisection first. Yeah, so yeah, test testing the commands would be nice. Uh, so this doesn't do anything. Yep, so we need dash E. Okay, so this and this, wow. Well, hmm, that's weird. Really... Oh, right, well, you're using double square brackets. Maybe use single square brackets. Hmm, should be, should be supported by Bash as well, though. Um, well, honestly, I kind of don't want to wrangle with Bash right now. Um, oh, you also need the show for next level. You will. Oh. Yes, that uh, sounds better. Um, oh, that, that works yeah. with nice. single ones as well. Okay, so uh, yeah, we just need it raw. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, I wonder, can I get bisect reset without restarting the start and ending points? So that would be useful. Reset, uh, I'm not sure. Can pass we can do that. to reset, maybe it does something useful. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe let's do get bisect log and I'm just gonna Copy this one, and then I'm gonna get bisect reset and get bisect start. I think there is a syntax for passing it there as well, but I'm just gonna say um, new this one and the old one is the first one. Well, yeah. 
this and now let's I mean let's run it again and I hope, hope I got it right this time something's wrong because it says 22 just 22 re revisions oh. 25, okay apparently I don't really know how to use git, git bisect efficiently right here so I, I kind of really want to find the right version though mm. Okay, let, let me give it. It must be also the proper hash from the. Yeah. I mean, let me let me go back to. Let me go. Let me reset. Get bisect reset. Um, then I'm just gonna check this. We are in three eight right now. Okay. Start get bisect. Uh, that's new. Yes. And then we, uh, the other one we had was our, I think in the template, we had this one, okay, or git bisect, um, oh, git checkout. Uh, that looks better. Get bisect old. All right. Okay, now it's gonna do the calculation again. That takes a bit longer. That sounds good. All right. Uh, something I did want to mention is that I recently discovered um, npins as an alternative to niv, and it's not as popular, but it's more actively developed and it does have some kind of nicer features i think it might let's actually see does it contain timestamps because that's what i've wondered about uh niv.json that's niv1 sources.json it does not contain timestamps oh that's unfortunate that would have been nice. Well, uh, in any case, um, I might be using npins in the future. But yeah, git bisect run. All right, now I, I think uh, while we ran it with these commit with these flags, let me just copy the same ones, and I believe that should then work. Well, ideally, I guess you would put this in an actual script so you wouldn't have to assemble it on the command line. That would be a bit better. But I think finally we can view the price action happening. And yes, we found it, finally. I'm gonna, we have an announcement, we have yeah, uh, and what does actually diff look like? <laughs> we have some collapse in the meeting. So I'm going to go next packages commit. That's easy way to find PR right here. And uh, yeah, August. Lots of discussion and actually where Yeah. Oh, see the release notes. We have release notes linked to, and I guess we might find the exact change we were wondering about. Well, it's a it's a lot of changes, so I'm not gonna try to find that. Um. Okay. Yes. Uh. Maybe. So we we kind of totally focused on this one. Um, we also had, oh yeah, maybe I can briefly mention this. So I'm, I was a long time shepherd on RFC 101, well, for like a year and we've been having discussions and finally we kind of reopened the RFC anew. So there's a proposal to standardize next formatting now with, uh, uh, with me as co-author and Pygames as the main author. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in kind of participating in the discussion, 
feel free to check it out and give some feedback. I think it would also be nice to just give kind of an overview or kind of highlights of the RFCs, uh, or at least my highlights. Um, well, I oh, actually, we have this PR, which is an FCP. So FCP means the RFC is about to be merged and it's the final FCP stands for final commit, final comment period uh, in which you can leave comments and still kind of bring up major uh, arguments against the RFC. But it's on, it's planned to be merged and that's gonna happen in a couple of days. So what is the RFC about? It's about establishing standard doc comment syntax index. And so the proposal, if we go to the details section down here, design is to use slash star star to refer to doc comments. And so we have some examples here, so you can place them anywhere. Now the dot, the star star is nice because it's backwards compatible with existing syntax. Uh, like Nix treats everything in between as a comment. So that's nice. Um, I believe there's also a syntax with the single line comment. Um, actually, no, that's not here. No, that's not here. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that's, that's, it's kind of small RFCs. Uh, my recommendation for RFCs is to keep the, sm the scope as small as possible, really only focus on one thing. If something is, if, if you aren't sure about something, don't include it in the RFC. Uh, but then again, most people, uh, like it's, RFCs don't happen that often. But yeah, if you're, if you're interested in writing an, R an RFC, that encourage more people to do that, then uh, try to keep it as small as possible to really not get stuck. Um, we also have, we have an RFC on adding ACLs, so permission control, to the next door. So you can store uh, kind of secrets in the next door without exposing them to everyone on the system. Um, these are all in draft. Uh, let's see, is there any other highlights? We have a pipe operator RFC. Uh, this one is currently a bit stalled. Uh, but it proposes to add a pipe operator to Nix, which makes a lot of operations nicer. So let's see, do we have an example? Detailed designed. So yeah, it's the, this is the proposal. And it kind of looks like, like this. That's well, wrapped across the line. But yeah, you can kind of take, um, actually, yeah equivalent to this. So you take an argument and you pipe it into a function. That's kind of how you can think of it. Think of it. Oh, and this is actually not built in stop pipe. Built in stop pipe doesn't exist. It's, oh yeah, it's slipped up pipe. So this is a proposal to add built in stop pipe. Yep. We also have, uh, oh, this one is interesting as well. This proposes to have to enable more service managers to use kind of, to have a an abstract service manager declaration kind of syntax so you could say um, ideally all services on nixos could also be used on macOS but that currently doesn't work because uh, nixos uses systemd and macOS uses uh, i think launchd and so there needs to be some kind of abstract in between where you can declare a service in both service managers and have them be kind of delegated to the to the correct one. And so that goes a bit into that. Uh, the current proposal doesn't have a large general agreement, uh, at least the implementation of the current one. Um, but the general idea is uh, generally approved, as you can see by the likes here. Um, yeah, uh, we also have boots back. Well, you can see the list here if something interests you. Oh yeah, if something interests you, you can also become a shepherd. Um, so shepherd is the way in which RFCs get decided. And 
RFCs need shepherds to even be able to be accepted. And you need three to four of those shepherds. And um, a lot of RFCs are actually lacking shepherds. So yeah, I encourage everyone, if something interests you or you know something about this or would like to help out even, um, yeah, nominate as shepherd. You can see here all of the ones that have Oh, what, would and, uh, uh, what would you need to do uh, as shepherd? So there's uh, generally three to four shepherds. One of them is the leader. The leader has to do a bit more, and that's kind of just maybe organize a meeting among the shepherds. Uh, the shepherds themselves, there's no like obligations, like it's, it's not a paid position or anything. So no one <laughs> would complain if you didn't do very much. Uh, but the general expectation is that you meet, that you give feedback, that you look at the RFC, that you kind of collect feedback in the RFC, kind of summarize the RFC, and just kind of tend to the RFC, make sure it gets to finish and it doesn't get stuck. Uh, even if you want to reject the RFC, that's fine too. And generally, it's encouraged to have differing opinions on the uh, in the shepherds. So there's a representation of all of them. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's about good. Uh, so it was a bit of more of a messy episode. I'm not sure if this format, uh, is going to work super well into the future. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's decide that, uh, next time. All right. Um, then see you everyone.